In the previous video, you learn about how we can set up our backend server using Express. Also, we learn about how we can connect our MongoDB database using Mongoose. And now, in this video, we'll learn about how we can model our data using Mongoose schema before we store that inside our MongoDB database. So for that, here inside this project, I'm going to create this brand new folder called Models. Basically, here we are trying to follow MBC pattern, which stands for Models, View and Controller. We are going to separate our codes according to the models, view and the controller. Here we are not going to write any view that is totally different. Okay. Here we are going to add our models and controller in separate folders. Also, if you guys want to know more about this MBC pattern, then I will leave a link in the description box below. You will learn from there. Okay. Here I'm going to add this user.js. First, let's import our mongoose. And we're going to require it from this mongoose itself. Now we want to create our user schema. For that, we can use this new mongoose.schema. Now inside this object, we can define our schema. Now let's talk about what is this schema thing, okay? In the previous video, you saw that inside this MongoDB, we added our database inside here, this fs to do, right? Now inside this database, we want to add our data. If you click on this collections, then here you can see currently our database is empty. But now with the help of this mongoose schema, now we want to add our user inside our database, right? Like for example, this fs to do is our database. Okay, this is our database. Now inside this database, we want to store our users. These are the users that we want to store inside our database. Now if you want to, you can store your data inside MongoDB however you want, okay? Like if you want to store one user with name, some name, okay. If you want to store your user with name, or if you want to store an email as well of that user, okay, you can do that. Also, you can change this. Now, we don't want to store our name, okay. Only we want to store our email. Or you want to store completely different value here, like phone. In MongoDB, this is completely fine. You can store your data however you want, okay? But we don't want to clutter our database with these kind of values. So here, what we are going to do, we want to create some kind of blueprint and then we want to store our user according to that blueprint. Let me show you what I mean. Let me remove the code from here. Now inside this schema, I'm going to define my schema first inside this user. At first, let's see what kind of user we want, okay? So this is a user. And inside this user, we want to have name or also you can store full name. Okay. We want to have name and after that name, we want to have email. And also we want to have avatar or profile picture. Okay. Now, if you guys don't know, then this is the kind of a design that we want to create inside React Native app. And for this app, we are writing our backend code. Okay. So here you can see inside the sign up we will have this full name, email, password, and this avatar or profile picture. Now we want to store all of these things inside our database, right? So for that, we want to create the schema, which will be suitable for these kind of data. So for that, also we want to store our password as well. This is the kind of a user that we want to store inside our database. So for that here inside this mongoose schema, first we are going to store this full name now here we can define the type of our data okay so the type of this full name will be a string okay and here we can specify if this full name is required or not so here we can specify the required to be true like this also we want to store our email as well and the email type of this email will be string as well. Okay. And this email also will be required. Okay. So this will be true. Also, we want to store our password. The type of this password will be string. Okay. And this will be required. Now at the end, we want to store our avatar as well. And the type of this avatar will be 
buffer. This is a special kind of data that we can store inside our MongoDB database. Okay, and this avatar will not be required because here inside this UI, you can see we have this option called skip. And if the user wants to skip this, then we don't want to store any avatar inside our database. So that's why this field will be not required. So here you can see we only have this type buffer. So what we can do, we can remove this curly brace from here like this. And we can simply store this buffer inside this avatar like this. Okay. Now, if you don't want to require your value or if you only have this type, then you can specify it like this. Okay. Now, this is the blueprint that we want. Okay. Here you can see we want to store our user like we want to have this full name, email, password and avatar. So this is the kind of blueprint that we want. So it's called a schema. Okay. Now let's remove the user from here. Now we want to model our schema for that we can use this mongoose dot model first we need to pass the name of our model and that will be user and here you can see I'm using this capital letter you can use a small letter as well but here I'm going to go with this one now as the second parameter we need to pass the actual schema and that will be this user schema so let's pass that user schema here like this now we can simply export this model dot exports and we want to export this mongoose model like this for now let's save this file now if we come to this app.js for now let's hide this explorer tab okay now here you can see this is the code to connect our mongodb database to our backend server now what i'm going to do i'm going to move this code to the separate file inside this models i'm going to create this file called db.js let's copy all of this code from here paste it here now here what we can do we can export this like this model dot exports okay we want to export this let's save this file come to this app.js let's comment out this code let's import we cannot import it like this we need to require that so let's go to the same folder models slash db okay now let's save this file and test our app here i'm going to run our server with this npm start command let's hide this explorer tab and here through this error oh sorry guys we don't want to export this let's remove this model let's export save this and now here you can see our error is gone port is listening so let's remove this code from here hide our terminal for now and now if you come to this local host 8000 then here you can see our port is running so now here what i want to do i want to accept another request so for that we can use this app dot this time i want to listen to the post request okay and whenever we get this post response on this create a user endpoint we are going to create our user so here we will get this request and response and now we can import our user we can require our user from that models like this now to create our very first user what we can do we can use this user and inside this object we need to pass the value according to our schema like here we want to pass this full name email password and this avatar if you want to okay so here what i'm going to do first i'm going to pass this full name so let's pass this universal name chonto and another will be email and let's use this john at the rate email.com and let's use this very secret password one two three four now because creating user is an asynchronous task so we need to await it okay first we need to use this await also you can use other asynchronous method like then and catch here we are going to use this async aware so here we are using this aware so we need to wrap this function inside this async keyword 
okay now here we will get a user so let's store our user inside this user variable and as i already told you guys in the previous video now inside this request we will have the data that is coming from our front end and we can use this response to send data to our user okay so for that here what i'm going to do i'm going to send this response so here we can send this response like this also we can send json data as well so for that we need to use this res.json okay so here we can send this user like this so let's save this file if you come to our web browser and it says the site can't be raised so let me see what is the problem let's open our terminal and here it says model exports no, sorry guys inside this user this is not model this is module okay let's change this to module now i save this file then you can see our error is gone and our port is listening now now if you come to this app.js then here you can see we are listening to this post request right and also you can see this mongodb warning we will fix it later okay for now let's hide this terminal for now let's come to our web browser now if i try to go to this create user then here you can see it says cannot get create user okay and that is because here we are listening to this post request so we cannot test our app with the web browser so for that we need to have this special tool called postman now if you guys don't know about this postman or if you guys don't have this postman then this is the tool which will help us to make fake requests like it will mimic like the front end okay now if you don't have this then you can simply go to your web browser search for this postman and from this link download postman you can download this and it is completely free okay now after downloading this you can simply double click on press that next 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 to install this it is very simple now after that we can go to this and let's make our fake request first we want to change this request from get to post now we want to go to this localhost 8000 and create user localhost colon 8000 slash create user okay now if i send this then here you can see we are getting back this full name email password with this id and this id is created by mongoose but if you come to this mongodb and refresh this database then you will not see that user here and that is because we are not storing this user for that we need to pass this user dot save okay let's await it let's save this let's open our terminal and uh, let's try to store our user and uh, we're getting nothing and finally throw this error and let's see what is the problem and i think this problem is because this ip address we need to change our ip address okay if you see our previous warning then here you can see it says make sure your current ip address is on your app current cluster okay so let's change this edit this add current ip here you can see my ip let's confirm this let's save our file once more and here you can see this message our db is connected now let's send this request again let's send this and here you can see we get our user back now if we go to this and refresh our database let's go to this collections and inside here the, you can see fs to do users now if i try to send another request let me go to this postman let's send another request let's refresh our database again then here you can see guys we have these two users with the same name and email id and we don't want to do that right we want to store our user with the unique email addresses and to fix this you can simply go to your users.js and inside this email you can pass this unique to true save this file and here you can see this deprecation warning ensure indexes is deprecated use create indexes and for that we can go into this db.js and let's use this use create indexes and let's set it to true let's save this file and now i think that warning is gone okay let's try to store that same user again but you can see that user is stored right 
you can see we had these three users with the same email id and name and i don't know why but inside this mongodb sometimes this unique works and sometimes it doesn't so in the next video i'll show you guys how you can validate your incoming data and also i'll show you guys how you can avoid these kind of duplication okay